In section 3.2, we're going to look at families of graphs. So we're going to talk about certain types of graphs and how to reflect them, translate them, um, just move them with uh, what what's happening in their equation. So a parent graph is a basic graph that is transformed through reflections or translations to create other members in a family of related graphs. So here are some really common parent graphs. Uh, the pictures are a little better on your piece of paper. But we have constant functions, identity functions like the line y equals x, polynomial functions like x squared and x cubed, square root function, absolute value function, greatest integer functions, and rational functions. And those are examples of what those parent graphs look like. So what we want to do is we're going to observe what's going to happen when we graph a parent graph of x cubed and then see what happens when we make it negative and we're going to we're going to look at the translation. So, if I'm going to make two tables of values, f, I'm sorry, x and f of x and then we will do let me choose a different color actually. We'll do this one in green here. We'll do x and g of x. So, um looking at f of x here, I'm going to plug in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, just picking some basic values. Cubing things, this is going to be negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, and 8. Over here, I'll pick the same values and plugging into g of x, I'm going to get positive 8, 1, 0, negative 1, and negative 8. So I'm going to graph these two functions. Um, for x cubed, I'm at 0, 0. At 1, I'm at 1. At negative 1, I'm at negative 1. At 2, I'm at 8. And down at negative 8. So this is a basic graph of x cubed. This is the parent function. Okay, and let's see what happens when I graph negative x cubed. Um, negative 2 becomes positive 8. Negative 1 becomes positive 1. 0, 0. 1, I'm at negative 1, and 2, I'm at negative 8. So this is negative x cubed. So what I've done is I've taken that blue line, and I've rotate or flipped it across the x-axis here. So if you took that blue line and visualized flipping it across the x-axis, then I have... Um, and then I have the graph of negative x cubed. So we also want to think a lot, think back to when we were doing um, trig functions. And remember, we had a negative out front, so all of our points reflected across the x-axis. And we talked about translations and um, and shifts then. So this is the, this is the same idea, just with more basic functions. So let's look at how these different changes occur. So we have reflections, first of all, like we just saw. Um, if you have a negative out front of your function, that means your graph is reflected across the x-axis, like we just saw. So this is a graph of x squared. If it has a negative out front, it's going to reflect across the x-axis. If the negative is inside the function, then it's going to reflect across the y-axis, which means the left-hand side of the graph is going to uh, match up with the right-hand side and, and vice versa. So this is the graph of, negative, of f of negative x. Then we have translations, which come from adding values either outside the function or inside the function. And you'll remember from our sine and cosine graphs, when you add values outside the function, you move your graph up that many units. And when you subtract a number outside the function, you move that graph down that many units. So if I have f of x plus c, then my graph will be up that many units. It's a bad drawing, sorry. And if I'm down c, then my graph will shift down. The vertex of my graph will shift down c units. If, the, if you're adding and subtracting inside your function, then that translates left and right. So remember, it's opposite of what the sign is telling you. So if you're adding um, a number inside your function, you're going to shift um, in the negative direction. So this is when you add C, you shift to the left. When you subtract C, you shift to the right. So it's, a, it's backwards from what you might think. 
And then finally, dilation. So this is making our graph um, skinnier or fatter, if you'd like to think of it that way. So remember, when you have a number out front of your function that is bigger than 1, then you're making your graph wider. Um, so you're expanding your graph vertically. So you can think about every single one of these points is expanding vertically. It's shifting up. So you're going to have a more narrow graph. So, um, so sorry, not fatter, it's getting, it's getting slimmer. Um, so it's going to be, that's when C is, is bigger than 1. When C is a fraction or smaller than 1, then your points are shifting vertically. Um, they're compressing the graph, so the graph is getting um, shorter, if you will. So this will be 0 when C is between 0 and 1. When uh, you're, a constant is multiplying inside your function and it's bigger than 1, it compresses the graph horizontally. Um, so that, again, is going to appear like a skinnier function. And when C is a fraction less than 1, it will appear as a wider function. So we want to be able to take these... Um, these things that are happening inside of our equations and just be able to apply them to graphs of parent functions. So for example here, we have a graph of the parent function y equals the square root of x, and I've graphed it for you there. Um, if not, you can do a table of values. Oh, I think I wrote a table of values for you here. So x and root x, 0 is at 0, 1 and 1, 4 it's at 2, 9 it's at 3. So we can graph that parent function. So once we have that parent function graph, um, we don't necessarily need to make a table of values for the rest of these. So here, part A, I'm adding 2 outside the function. That means I'm going to shift up 2. So every point in this graph is going to shift up 2 units. So I can just take out some key points and shift them up 2 units and graph. So this is, um, this is up 2 units. Part B, I am subtracting 4 inside the function. That means I'm going to move to the right 4 units. So I'm taking all of these points and just shifting them right 4 units. So this is the square root of x minus 4. And then finally, this last one, two things are happening. I am shifting down 1 unit, and inside the function, I am shifting left three units. So every point in this function is going down one, left three. Down one, left three. Down one, left three. So your graph is going to look like that. And that's the x plus three minus one. So you should be able to just translate the graph just looking at the function and telling, and telling what's happening there. So why don't you try and sketch the parent graph of well, I've sketched the parent graph of this function for you. Try to do these translations. So go ahead and pause this for a minute, and then I'll put the answers up in a second. So please try and do this on your own. Okay, and there's the solution. So A is in green, B is in red, and C is in blue. So those are the translations you should have gotten. Okay, so let's now observe a graph and see what's happening um, in, in related graphs, and we're just going to describe what's going on. So our first function in part A, this is a parabola, so we know its parent function um, was y equals x squared. So we want to say, well, what happened from y equals x squared? This graph then was translated down three units, and it was translated to the right two units. So it's still a graph of x squared, it's just kind of shifted down and over. Then we want to say, well, what if we then take the absolute value of that graph? That would look like the absolute value of x minus 2 squared minus 3. And this is the graph over here to the right um, of, of, of the absolute value of f of x. So what happened here? What we did was it took the part of the graph that was below the x-axis and reflected it over the x-axis above. Um, so that's what taking the absolute value of that graph will do. It takes all the negative points of the graph and then makes them positive, reflecting them over the x-axis. 
if we look at um, part C, y equals the absolute value of just the x, that's going to look like the absolute value of x minus 2 squared minus 3. So we want to say what happened to this graph here. Um, if you look at the original graph um, was this parabola here. So I've gotten rid of this portion of the graph and I've reflected the remainder of the graph over the y-axis. So the part of the parent graph that was on the left of the y-axis has been removed because the um, portion to the right of the y-axis has been reflected across that. So I'm going to write that in words um, here and copy that down. One sec. Okay, so part B, we have a reflection of the portion of the graph below the x-axis over the x-axis. And part C, we have the portion of the parent graph on the left of the y-axis is being replaced by a reflection of the portion on the right of the y-axis across the y-axis. So you should be able to describe in words what you're seeing happening in these graphs. So make sure you write that down, and I will see you in class tomorrow to do lots of fun graph translating.